Depending on what area of pharmacy you work in, there will be different expectations for the pharmacy technician. Here in community pharmacy, especially in an independent setting, we have huge expectations for the pharmacy technicians. They are, in essence, the pharmacist's right hand, and um, they help guide us through every step of the process of making sure somebody gets medication and that it's correct. In this independent setting, the technicians are um, responsible for not just filling medications and data entry, but they also have the opportunity to look at third-party reimbursements and correct pricing. They're also um, involved in inventory management and ordering, um, also ordering of chemicals and durable medical equipment, um, and especially things like uh, Medicare um, billing and reimbursement by Medicare for durable medical equipment. In this independent community setting, the technicians have wonderful opportunities not only to advance themselves in many aspects of pharmacy practice, but the rewards that they get both from their customers and from the things that they do on a, on a daily basis is wonderful. This is where I receive all new prescriptions. We prioritize by the color of the baskets. White baskets are for you know people who are not necessarily waiting, coming back later, maybe things we're just putting on hold, um, but that's where these are. If I receive a red basket, that means somebody is waiting. So I always take a red basket first. Um, in this basket will be important information like the prescription, obviously, any new insurance cards, um, photo identification for certain types of medication, and um, I'll go from there. The most important part of the prescription um, is the doctor's signature, and then the patient's date of birth. There are many patients with the same, uh, same name, same middle initials, everything like that, so the easiest way to identify them is by their date of birth. So that's where I'll start off. So I've entered the patient's date of birth, which has pulled up their name and their entire profile. Um, here you'll see all the drugs they've gotten in the past, um, any list of allergies, um, things like that. So I received a new prescription. I do see there's new allergies on there, so I can, I can double check to make sure through in their patient profile that this medication doesn't interact adversely to what they have. Then I'll go back and I'll just start entering the prescription. I'll enter the doctor's name and then, then the drug. The drug will give me a list of many generics and things like that, but I can go ahead and type that in. Type the quantity, type the directions, make sure I'm choosing the correct NDC. A lot of times there are NDC, um, certain, many generics for one brand. Um, some patients prefer certain NDCs, so I'm gonna double check to make sure this is the only one we have for this drug, so I'm gonna choose that one. I'm going through making sure that the directions are the same, the day supply is calculated correctly, um, that it's a written prescription versus um, an e-scripted prescription versus a phoned-in prescription. That's all very important information. Um, the day the prescription was written will also be very important as far as expiration of the prescription if there are um, refills. And then I go ahead and make sure if they have insurance, I want to make sure I'm processing it through the correct insurance. They don't, so we set a, a cash price for them. So once I've processed all their prescriptions, I go ahead and print a label. The label will print up here. I'm going to put the printed label with the prescription, and then I'm going to pull the drug to give to the pharmacist to count out and to verify that my typing is correct, that the doctor is correct, the medication, and then um, he dispenses from there. All right, so I've found the correct drug. On the label is the correct NDC which matches up with the bottle. I'm going to make sure that is the correct NDC, um, and then I found it. So after that, I just give it to the pharmacist, and from then the pharmacist will double check my counting, count up the prescription, and it'll be ready for the patient to receive. All right, when receiving a C2 prescription, uh, there are a little more checks and balances. First, we're going to need proper photo identification. That is a valid photo ID, could be a driver's license, um, anything with a, a passport, anything with a picture ID of the patient that is um, current, up to date. The prescription, next, is also very important. Uh, the doctor's signature, um, the doctor's DEA number, um, and 
the, the date, the way they've written it, everything has to be written out very specifically. So once we've um, verified the doctor's DEA, then we make sure they're within date range. Um, if they are within proper date range to fill the prescription, we go ahead and fill it. The pharmacist then will take it over. They will use the E4 system to check to make sure all controlled substances are within uh, proper dates of filling them. We do make a photocopy of the identification to attach to the prescription to be filed away for each C2 um, and, along with the e force report. Pharmacy technicians are responsible for properly triaging um, insurance and there's different types of insurances. Um, there's commercial insurance, there's Medicare plans, and then there's state plans like Medicaid. Uh, there's some significant differences amongst those plans. Um, the, um, it's expected that the technician know how to properly bill those and how to address the problems that may arise when they're trying to bill those insurance companies. Um, it's not just problems with the insurance themselves, but with the uh, insurance company requiring prior authorization or not covering certain products. So part of our expectations here um, are that the um, pharmacy technicians know how to bill those properly. Uh, we do a lot more Medicare billing here and uh, require more out of our technicians as far as their knowledge with third-party plans. In community pharmacy, uh, some of the technicians' duties may include compounding. Um, in this particular location, we do allow our pharmacy, pharmacy technicians to compound uh, certain creams, um, capsules, suppositories, and other things that they may need to do. The majority of this is stock, um, stock supplies. Uh, this will vary depending on what pharmacy you're in and what they allow their technicians to do. The technician is responsible for doing the math calculations, for actually putting the compound together, and it's double checked by the pharmacist before it's put together, and again, after it's put together. Today, we're gonna to make Proxicam capsules, and first we're gonna start off with all our supplies. So I'm gonna grab some gloves. mask. Okay, now we pulled the drug. So we're going to write down what we're making today. We're doing Proxicam 10 milligrams. So what you're going to write down the drug, the date, compounding, what the ingredients you're going to use, the lot number, expiration, 
manufacture. And the lot they want up here again. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and do the calculation. So we're doing 10 milligram capsules. Okay. And we're going to times that by 100 because that's how many we're going to do in quantity. So that comes to 1,000. And then there's there's 1,000 milligrams in a gram, so that's how you get your gram. Milligrams, the caps, and this will be one gram. This is milligrams, what it totals, and then it'll equal out to one gram. These are 10 milligram capsules. We're doing quantity of 100, which equals 1,000, and you take 1,000 milligrams into a gram is one gram. We're going to weigh this out. I close the sides because sometimes there's air when people walk back and forth. You want to make sure you get the right calculation. Very touchy. Right, let's see how that works. There you go. Okay, I'm going to pull the rest of the drugs that we're going to use, which is lactose. Okay, so these are all my drugs. Um, next, we're going to set up the capsule machine itself. So we're going to use, these are number one capsules. We're going to load up the machine. This releases the capsule and it does a set of 50 at each time. You just want to push these down. Put this back on and push it forward so you get the other 50 in there. Okay, I close up as I go, make sure we don't spill anything. off. Some of them turn upside down. It's got to turn the right way. Okay. The cover on. You want to tighten the top. We're going to seal this up. Okay. I'm going to put the capsules back down here. Okay. We're going to take this apart. We're going to release this. I'll drop the capsules down. Okay, a packing stat is how many milligrams um, of drug uh, fits into a certain size of a capsule. We're using mm -hmm. size one capsules right now. Our filler is lactose. Our drug is pyroxicam. So a size one capsule holds 315 milligrams of pyroxicam. It holds 365 milligrams of lactose. We're only filling our capsule with 10 milligrams of drug, which is the pyroxicam. So therefore that's 3% of that capsule will be full. So 97% uh, of the capsule will contain lactose. 97% times the 365 milligrams that, that capsule holds times 100 will give us the amount of lactose that we need to add to the batch of 100. Um, the technician will weigh out the amount of lactose that she needs and the amount of drug that she needs and mix it in a mortar and pestle. Okay, now we're going to mix the Proxicam with the lactose. Oh, 
there you go. All right, I'm gonna go call a pharmacist. Jessica! Can you come check my work, please? I checked the technician's work to make sure the calculations are correct and that she's using the proper equipment and has everything set up. I'll do another check after she's completed this. Um, usually the technician and I will have a discussion during the time that I'm checking to go over the process of compounding the medication. Okay. Um, you're making 100 capsules, so mm -hmm. add some of the lactose, then your drug, and the remaining part of the lactose. Mix it until it's uniform, mm -hmm. and then you can um, make your capsules. Okay, and then just call me when you're done. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, All right, we're going to put a little bit of the lactose in. Then the drug. Mix this around. Make sure the drug gets in there. Okay, and we're going to add the rest of the lactose. Try to do equal parts. Okay, and then the rest of the lactose. Okay. Next, we're going to put them into the capsule machine. Okay. I'm just going to dump that here. And we're going to start putting them into the capsules. And then we just give it a little tap. We take this little tool. This is just to push down the drug so we can get the remainder inside the capsules. Okay. Okay, put the lid back on, loosen this back up. You're taking it, squeeze the plates together. Lift the top. Oh. And we're gonna seal them. This pushes the capsules together. I have one capsule that didn't um, pull out when I was when I put them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly pull up on the bottom, and I've got the total ingredient, and I'm going to cap it, push it right on there. So this way we didn't lose the capsule itself. We're going to open this up. Knock them out. That's the finished product. So then I'll go get the pharmacist. Jessica? Part of the checking that I do is to make sure that each dosage is uniform. So I'll check to make sure that she has the same amount of powder in each capsule. Um, in this particular case, you know, the technicians technique and process that they use is very important in making sure that the final product is uniform. Um, in this case, um, when you saw her adding the drug and mixing the drug together with the inert substance, which was the lactose, um, she used a process called geometric dilution. And that's where she added some of the lactose first approximately one gram, the same amount of the drug. She mixed that together and then added the remaining part of the lactose and that helped her get a very uniform distribution of the drug in the entire um, dilution. 
Um, also the process that she used in putting it into the capsules, she used something called a punch, which punches the, um, the drug and the lactose into the capsule. And she does that because it helps her get an even amount of drug in every capsule. There's your finished product. When inputting nursing home prescriptions, they're the same as typing on a regular prescription, except that you need times and what the medication is for um, and how they're taking it, such as orally, um, via G-tube, and once or twice a day. So in this instance, I'm typing, I'm filling a prescription for potassium, and it's by mouth twice a day, as needed for a supplement. Um, when filling nursing home prescriptions, they're in these little cards with specific numbers for dates. We put one in each spot, so when they get to the nursing facility, they can just pop it out. And since there's 30 days in September, right? Okay. So we will only fill up to the 30. And then our labels go on. With such. And we usually set it aside. After the um, process of packaging and the pharmacist checking our work, we separate, we keep these separate from the um, regular customers. Nursing home is different where we deliver sometimes or the homes come and pick them up. So they're separated. I'd like to explain how we do our ordering for our stock up front. It's the same in the back. When we sell an item, each of our items has a sticker from our supplier. We take that sticker off, put it on a piece of paper so that when we get a chance, when we don't have a customer in front of us, we'll go back and order from the order computer. Not every store does that. Some stores do an electronic where they will come out and scan their shelves. They might do that every evening or possibly whenever they have a free moment. Then that gets automatically sent to the supplier. When we get a chance, we take that information that we have put down and the prescription area also does the same thing. They take empty bottles also and put them in a container so that we can scan them. We do this periodically through the day so that the pharmacist has a clear workspace. And in our instance, the orders are sent at a specific time. It's just automatic. The orders received by the technician, um, we receive the actual product in the store. Um, that product is checked against the invoice. Um, and that's done for accuracy in case something's been shorted or in case something has been billed to us incorrectly. Um, the product is stickered um, with the cost of the medication and the date that it was received as well as a, a reference to the invoice number and then those products are placed on the shelf. Um, there are a couple of exceptions. One is controlled substances. Um, Class two controlled substances are handled a little bit differently. They're always separated when they come in from the wholesale house from the other inventory. That's what this is in front of me. Um, there's a, a form called a 222 form. It's a form that goes to the DEA and um, the technician is responsible for checking the invoice against our 222 form, which is our ordering form. Um, they put the number of packages received, they sign it, and a copy of this goes to the DEA. Depending on the pharmacy that you're working in, receiving inventory may be done a little differently. The class two medications, however, that form is standard and that won't change between pharmacies. 
Um, the, sometimes we get refrigerated or items that have special storage um, and those are shipped differently and those are always a priority when they come into the pharmacy so that we don't um, store them incorrectly. The technicians in this setting are responsible for pulling expired medications off the shelf. Um, we pull three months ahead of time and then there's a company that will give us credit for those returns and destroy them. Uh, for instance, this medication is going to expire within the next month, so our first priority is to get it off the shelf and away from our inventory that has current dating. We separate these by putting them in a bin and this gets located away from the regular inventory to uh, be sent back and destroyed. Yeah, um, I was looking at my mom's prescriptions and stuff, and I noticed that there's a couple things wrong on here. Okay. You got the doctors wrong, and I'm not happy. I mean, how do I know that everything is correct? I okay. I mean, the medicine itself, and I mean, I don't know how many times this has happened before. Let me check the prescription for you while you have a moment. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got the prescription here for you. Mm -hmm. Evidently, the physician's assistant was in and signed the order for you, so that's the physician's assistant for the doctor. So, and I've double checked. The quantity is correct. Also, the strength of the medication is correct. Did you have any other concerns? No, I just want, you know, they gotta be careful on double checking and stuff what they have. And I mean, I want to make sure, this is my mom, I want to make sure she's got the right medicine. And, I don't blame you. you. Know, if there is any question at all, don't hesitate to call. You know, she's old. She doesn't know what to look for mm -hmm. and certain things. And I looked at hers and I was like, sure. that's got the wrong information on there. Sure. I want to make sure that, you know, the okay. right medicine and stuff is in there. If you'll just let her know that the physician's assistant is the one that signed, the physician's assistant works for the same doctor that she sees. So, and as I say, if she has any questions or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come in or call us and we'll be happy to review it for you. All right, thank you. There you go. Good morning. Hi. Have you been with us before? No, first time. Okay. I need to get some information from you. I need to get an address. Uh, 8191. Marguerite Circle. I need a date of birth. Uh, 9 -26 Any allergies to medications? Uh, penicillin. You said you had an allergy or a reaction to erythromycin. I sick to my stomach sometimes. Oh, right. Would you like child-proof or non-child-proof lids on Oh, easy open, please. Easy open. And would you care to wait for this, or would yes. you like to come back? No, I'll wait for it. All right. It'll be probably about 15 minutes or so. Super, thanks. If you'd like to have a seat, we'll be ready. You were asking about free of dyes and fragrances. We do have a line that a lot of the dermatologists are looking at nowadays. We have this particular item. I don't know whether you're looking for a cleansing bar, but they also have cleansing bars that are free of dyes and fragrance. I think the fragrance. cream would be good for my wife, but how about a smaller size just for me for today? We do have a smaller size. It comes in a tube. It also comes in a pump. And it's dye free and it, fragrance free? It is. Oh great, that'll be good for her. For okay, she sent me you're down. all set. But she's and also you... got some bladder irritation. She wanted me to ask you if you had anything for, to help her um, urinary discomfort. We do have things for the urinary tract infection, but these are items that I would like to have a pharmacist come out and check with oh. you on because he might have specific questions as to how this is going to affect the patient. Oh. So if you have a moment, I'll see if I can get a pharmacist for a consultation. That would be great. Thank you so much. You're I appreciate welcome. that. I've picked up your father's information. Um, it looks like we're looking today. Does he need both the wafers and the pouches? Okay. And I do have the numbers that he has been getting in the past. So let me see what we're picking out here. All right, and I 
do need to double check. Has any information changed for the father? Has his address changed or phone number? What address does Medicare have on record for your father? I think it should be the same. It should be the same? Okay. Then, and the doctor is the same as the last time? No yes. changes have been made there. Do I have to give him his ID card today? We have his Medicare number. You gave it to us originally when we signed it up, so we are all set with that. And we do have a refill for now. We will need to get a refill from the doctor the next time that he comes in. So if he's going to be seeing the doctor, if you could bring that in with us okay, with we'll you that. when you come. And I will have you, I'll fill out the paperwork, have you sign it. We do need to run it through the system so that it can be sent on to Medicare so that any reimbursement will come to you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> We've got your prescriptions ready for you. I've gone ahead and scanned you out, and but I need to get from you, since it's the first time you've been with us, for the HIPAA information, I need your signature, okay? And what I need you to do, to do is sign right here for the HIPAA information. And after that, if you'll hit done, and then I'll also need your signature that you've picked up your prescriptions. Okay, you're all set. I have HIPAA policy, and I'll give you that, since it is the first time you've been with us. If you have any questions at all, this is that we do not sell your signature or anything to you. You're more than welcome to look at it. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Do you have any questions for the pharmacist? All right. If you have any questions at all, please give us a call. And I hope you have a good day. Super. Thank you.